What's going on, anglers? Long time no talk to you guys. I know I haven't put a video out in a long time. Um, I filmed some stuff at the end of last year, but it just none of it turned out good at all. So um, what I really kind of wanted to do was show you my boat uh, that I fixed up and kind of take you through the process of what I did to fix this boat up. Um, like I said, I did this all at the end of last season, uh, maybe like August or, or so, and uh, went out on a few uh, bow fishing trips. So um, I got into bow fishing. Uh, I, I've always disagreed with bow fishing, so I've never liked bow fishing at all. Um, because like I'm just like you're just uselessly killing fish like and then you're not eating them but they're carp I don't know about you, but I don't want to eat a carp. Um, I don't eat gar so uh, It's just kind of a useless thing, but I got to looking at exactly what bow fishing does and um, With the carp issues we're having uh, these Asian carp that were introduced They are decimating like entire ecosystems. They are clearing out all the algae all the green all the plant life out of these creeks and canals and guess where bass and crappie and brim and all that lay their eggs that's right on the bottom in the green and then they eat that green they eat those eggs during the spawn they eat all that green so that they have no green to lay them into and uh, it's just becoming a very big problem there's places where it's definitely hurting the bass brim crappie population and it's only getting worse that's the main problem so we have to do something to trim back the population of these guys and about the best way to do it is to shoot them with an arrow and pull them in a boat so uh that, that's what bow fishermen do and and man it's a ton of fun like i'm i'm in love with this but basically i just wanted to show you the boat and walk you through that so um i, I will i will show you that if you want to skip right now um i will put a stamp down in the description uh and tell you exactly like where i start wiring the boat because that's one of my worst hated things when people talk for 15 minutes when I just want to watch how how to do something so uh, I'll put that stamp down there and you can skip to that uh, where I actually start showing how I wired the boat but anyway let's go to it anyway at the end of last year I uh, had this boat in the backyard um, it used to be my dad's boat stayed over his house for a long time the trailers dry rotted there was a couple things wrong with it so it just kind of set uh, for a couple years and then um, it came to my house to be stored at my house and then it set in my yard for a couple of years. So um, there was a bunch of trees growing up in it and leaves all down the bottom of it. It was horrible. But at the end of last year, I had a friend that took me out on a bow fishing trip. And I'd never been bow fishing before. And honestly, I always thought bow fishing was kind of cruel. And so I didn't want to go, um, you know, and I, I didn't want to do it. But anyway, I got to reading about bow fishing and uh, prior to going on this trip, and turns out bow fishermen do more for the environment than we could ever know. Um, this Asian carp problem that we're having, and honestly a carp problem overall, is starting to get kind of serious. And I think it's a lot more serious than a lot of us know um, as far as what they can do to the environment um, and what they can do to uh, just the, the, the habitat and, and the ecosystem because they eat so much algae, which is the reason they were first introduced um, here was that they eat so much algae and they get, you know, they clean up a lot of this uh, places with algae problems, but they had no clue how widespread they would get how fast. And now they are in places where there needs to be, uh, uh, you know, plant life on the floor of the creek river lake whatever and um these guys come down through and eat that well uh if you look at where bass and crappie and brim lay their eggs they lay it in that algae and in that green on the bottom of the uh, on the bottom of the channel on the bottom of the water column so uh, these carp are coming along and they're eating all of these eggs and all of their habitat where they lay their eggs so it's very important um, that we control the population of these and bow fishermen are the best uh, chance for that right now. So anyway, after reading this, I was like, you know, hey, maybe it's a, maybe it's something to check out. Went with my friend on a really clear lake. Um, he has a very simple setup with like six lights on his bass boat. And man, I had a blast. We didn't even shoot that many fish. I think we shot seven or eight fish. I had so much fun. So um, after that, I decided that I needed a boat. So I went and dug that. Uh, I'll show you some pictures right now while I'm talking actually of, of that boat, of the whole process. But um, I dug that boat out of the weeds and the trees and it took me about two weeks 
of working on it nearly every day and uh, to get it cleared out I resealed all the rivets um, this is definitely a budget boat I did not want to stick a lot into this because um, I knew if I got into this and that I would want a nicer boat and here we are back with this boat this year and that's what I've been working on as you can see all the tools and wiring and everything. as you can see from all the tools and the wiring and everything so um, we started out last year uh, like I said, I went super budget. I mean, this is all two sheets of plywood and some two by fours that I got for free. So, I mean, you know, I had maybe 150 bucks total in building this boat out. Um, I ordered some $45 lights from Amazon that run off your battery and honestly got, up, got us out there and got us to bow fish. Now, we shot a lot of fish at the end of last year over about five or six trips before it got too cold to go. And uh, the main problem with this boat was, is the trailer was always really bad. Um, the bearings were shot. Uh, the, the wheels were not trailer wheels. They were car wheels and they didn't roll well. So this year we got two brand new trailer tires and wheels on here. Um, we got brand new bearings. Uh, so I don't mind going on trips now and taking this different places. And the most important thing is we upgraded the lights. Uh, I still don't want to put a lot of money in this boat because um, I'm selling my big bass boat. Uh, I just don't use it enough to keep it. So um, in case I do upgrade to a nicer boat, I don't wanna have just thousands and thousands of dollars in this thing. So we're still keeping it budget, but they make something called a Vi Viugrium, I'm hoping I'm saying that right, light. That's it right there. You can get them on eBay. I think these were 160 for all 10. And I do have 10 lights on the boat, uh, two in the front and four on the sides. And then found a generator for sale uh, used online. And um, I paid $150 for it. It is a 4,000 watt generator, 3,200 peak, whatever. It's 3,200 watt generator, but uh, which is plenty enough to run my lights. And what's really nice about running a generator for anybody who doesn't bowfish is uh, you can actually order this thing called a Power Max. And it's a AC to DC converter. I can plug it in to a battery. I can have one single battery that runs this whole boat. And um, the Power Max will keep that battery charged all night long. I never have to worry about my trolling motor. I can run it on full all night long. Never worry about, you know, battery situation. But um, if, you know, there was a problem with the generator, I can still, I can still run my trolling motor. So um that's that's very nice and um yeah so i i like this we have a 55 pound thrust hand control trolling motor on the front and uh, i made a nice little redneck ingenuity stick so that it, uh, i don't have to reach down to run the trolling motor it's about all i've done to this boat um i've got an old motor on there for a rudder that's it uh so my goal this year was to put bow fishing lights on this boat and to um you know upgrade the lights put a motor on it and uh, that's about all i'm gonna do with this boat i'm gonna keep fishing out of it so uh anyway what i wanted to do though was i wanted to make a video and i wanted to walk through how i'm wiring these lights is this the official way is this the best way no but um i really wanted to uh make a video because there's really not any good videos for somebody who's just never done this you know i had a good idea of what i wanted to do but um, it would have been nice to just watch somebody else do it and it'd know it works um i started out with like what you would consider like in-house wiring like solid solid copper core wiring um and it worked but this stuff is very brittle and if you bend it back and forth too many times um it will or if you ever nick the outer uh, sheathing if, if you do anything to it the stuff just breaks like I can bend that back and forth a few times and just sit there and break that so um, I did not like that because uh, I like my stuff to at least be reliable I don't like to have problems when I'm out on the water so um, what we did was I kind of got a little angry that I wasted that much time and that much money on the wire because this stuff is not cheap um, and I went and found an old extension cord and yeah I cut it up I wired everything together that I needed to wire together and I soldered the connections and then put a wire nut on the end of it and then filled that wire nut with uh, liquid electrical tape to make it waterproof. And now two grown men couldn't pull that connection apart if they wanted to. So uh, I don't have to worry about it coming loose. I don't have to worry about it vibrating now. It's good flexible extension cord. Um, 
you can buy them for cheap you can buy them for like 13 14 bucks at walmart for a 50 foot extension cord like it's great so that's what i'm doing i have this side wired up completely um i still have to wire back my dc stuff because i still do have stuff that runs off dc these are all ac lights um, they do make dc bow fishing lights but they're very expensive so we're not going that direction again we're doing this as cheap as possible but um yeah they just plug directly into the generator um i ran a wire back to a plug and that just plugs into an extension cord with a splitter uh, you can run everything on one socket in your generator these are 100 watt lights and there's 10 of them so you do the math on that i think it comes out to like Mm, I forget how many amps, seven, eight amps, something like that. Um, but I, what I did was I wired one side and then wired the other side. Uh, eventually, if I get bored, I'm probably going to wire my front lights on a switch and then wire my left and right on a switch. That way I can just turn them on and off individually for when I'm like driving or backing the boat in or whatever. But for now, I just want them working. So uh, I wired one side together, wired the other side together, and going to have two plugs that you just plug into your extension cord and they just work. So uh, it's just less stuff to fail that way. But uh, anyway, I'm going to make a couple little videos on what I'm doing as far as wiring these lights. Um, it, it'll be pretty self-explanatory, but just in case you're like me and you're doing this for the first time and you just want to see maybe what somebody else is doing, uh, you'll you'll have it. So uh, yeah, without further ado, here we go. Okie dokie, normally I would have my GoPro on for this, so I would be hands-free, but we're going to do this one-handed so I can just kind of show you guys what I did. Uh, on the wall I'm doing, these these lights come like this, and I stripped these back. They come with a blue, yellow, and brown. Now, this is not our colors for what we would normally use. Uh, normally, like if you cut an open extension cord, you're going to have green, white, and, um, what is it? Green, white, and black. So, um... What I did was I took my white wire, I wired it to the blue. This was through trial and error, by the way. I should have looked it up, but I didn't. And then your yellow with the green stripe is your ground, and that goes to the green wire in your extension cord. And then um, the black wire goes to the brown wires. And that's basically all I did. I just pulled them all up here, stripped them. Uh, I have three connections. I have my front light running into my second light, and then the extension cord running out from that connection but uh, basically i just twisted those together and i have a little soldering iron uh, you can order these online for about 100 bucks they're very very nice by the way it's a ts100 and they have all sorts of cool little functions and stuff that you can do uh, inside here to uh, your ramp up and your temperature and all that good stuff and it'll have an auto uh, shut off mode when you lay it down for so long it shuts off and then when you pick it up it's got an accelerometer in it and it will uh it will start heating back up, up and they heat up in like five seconds literally five seconds they're fantastic nice little pencil size and you can actually run these off a of lithium battery as well so it's very nice but, but this is not a soldering walkthrough if you want a soldering walkthrough there's a ton of those on youtube so anyway uh i just wired all three together those soldered them you literally cannot pull these apart now um you would have to break the wire before you would ever pull these apart and then what I'm doing is I'm taking a wire nut and I'm just threading it on there. I'm obviously not gonna be able to thread it on there right now, probably, no, I can. So I'm just threading that on there pretty tight. Uh, that way it holds all three of those wires really solidly. And then um, all I'm doing is taking a, a li liquid electrical tape and I'm just filling up this wire nut with uh, liquid electrical tape. And, and, and actually, I kind of lied to you there. What I was doing before was I was taking liquid electric tape, painting it on here, then twisting this on here, then daubing that down down in there. And that way it just makes it all, makes the connection nice and waterproof. Uh, yeah, so then, you know, you get a little section of extension cord. Again, uh, I had this one just laying in the garage, so this is free to me. But um, strip the next end. I'm running it in here. I'm running my other end up here like i said you can kind of take your time just kind of think about this and make it neat uh, i didn't go as neat on the other side because i got in a hurry i got a little frustrated if i'm honest and i went in a hurry but yeah we'll just take this here and then i will cut another small section of the extension cord from here to here about a foot and a half long or so and i will wire that in with those and those will that extension cord will jump over here to this next one and I'll pull this up here and do the same thing again we'll wire another length here and then uh, once I get here I'll kind of show you I'll kind of show you what I'm doing 
But um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and wire uh, from here all the way down. I'm just gonna link all those together. Uh, I did wanna put this in here really quick uh, toward the front because they make these T-shaped connectors, right? You run one wire in this side, the other side runs out that, and then one wire runs down. It is very neat, okay? And it would be very much easier because you just run your wire up in there and then it has a little set screw you just crimp it with. That would be the best way. However, it was gonna cost me about a hundred bucks to order enough of those to do 10 lights. So I'm not doing that. Um, I'm doing this my way. It's solid, it's cheap, but uh, I'll, I'll come back to you guys in a moment. I wanted to, sh I wanted to show you on this side, uh, I just left the plug on the extension cord on this end and then wired it into the lights on that end. Then this one, they make these nice little uh, adapters. I can show you how that works actually. See, there's like the cap portion of it. And then the other portion, I didn't know I had them. Ah, it was back here on the ground. See, then the other side just wires in like so. And uh, like I said, that the back portion comes up and screws in. But uh, they're handy. Like I said, this wire just didn't work well. Uh, it kept breaking right here at this collar. Uh, any kind of flexing or anything can break them. You get bad connections, no connection, shorts. So, uh, yeah, we got rid of that. And we just went good old extension cord. It's plenty enough. Uh, this extension cord's rated for 15 amps. And like I said, I'm only running maximum like three and a half amps per side. So... Uh, that's more than enough. Most generators see the generators rated 13 amps, so I have plenty of headroom on the uh, internal breaker on the generator. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So anyway, there, guys, there you have it. It's really weird that the lights look like they're strobing in this. It's kind of crazy. They're solid in real life, so just know that. But uh, there you go. There they all growing, uh, glowing. I will uh, put a video up after dark that uh, shows them all blowing and everything. Generator actually goes back there. I just had it pulled up there for convenience. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna take all these wires right here and I'll just uh, zip tie them up nice and pretty where you can't really see them anymore. And uh, then we gotta work on the DC wiring. But there you go. It's got them all working. that helps somebody out i hope you know because um like i said i had never done ac wiring i didn't know if there was anything different if you just linked them together what definitely do not use home rated uh wire it's expensive and it doesn't work very well for this application because you really need wire to be flexible to do this so cut up an old extension cord go buy a cheap one from walmart i did use 14 gauge though um use at least 14 gauge don't use the 16 gauge it's going to put you really close to your amperage if you wire all your lights together, uh, which at first that's what I was going to do is wire all 10 together and then just have one plug. But um, definitely use definitely use the 14 gauge instead of the 16 gauge uh, just to give you some headroom there. But yeah, if I have any problems or anything, I'll make an update video. But hopefully here pretty soon we will have a video coming to you guys out on the water, actually bow fishing. Um, I'm trying to come up with a mount system because... I've watched bow fishing videos uh, where they just have the camera on their chips and it doesn't look as good. Um, you know, it's kind of cool to see a few shots that way, but you don't want to watch all that because you usually have somebody else in the boat shooting. You don't get them. So I'm going to try to come up with some kind of tripod system uh, to mount the GoPro, maybe like above us, like way up here somewhere and uh, have that, have that done that way. But thank you guys for watching and stay tuned. Like I said, hopefully I'll have, uh, I'll have some videos to you within a couple weeks. Um, I have a tournament, a bowling tournament to go to next weekend. And then um, after that, I will uh, I will try to get out there on the water, huh? I'm ready. Uh, I was going to tell you guys, if you want a good, um, I was thinking about it while the camera's off. If you want a really good soldering tutorial, um, there is a guy named Joshua Bardwell. Just look him up on uh, YouTube and then go to his like playlist, his tutorial thing, and look up the soldering tutorial. He's a drone, like a DIY drone guy. Um, I was building drones there for a little while, so I watched a lot of his videos, but he has the best soldering tutorial that I've seen on YouTube, and he, he uses the TS-100, and, and 
it's a good soldering iron if you want to get into actual real soldering. If not, just go to Home Depot and buy the little $15 soldering iron. They work for this application, not so much for the drone application. Uh, but anyway, so thank you guys for watching and stay tuned. Be sure to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Later.